Hi everybody. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about computer results for linear regression, talk to you a little bit about prediction and uh, as well as how to calculate uh, slope and y-intercept if you are given a mean and standard deviation. Okay, that last bit is something that's fairly uncommon, doesn't show up very often, but I wanted to at least expose you to it so you've seen it before, okay? So in lots of linear regression problems, you will not be asked to calculate slope, y-intercept, r, um, r squared, standard deviation of the um, of residuals, most of the time they'll be given to you in a computer output called a mini tab output, which is what you see on the left side of your screen here and also duplicated on the right side of your screen here. Okay? Right? So if you think back to the last video, you saw all of these complex formulas, right, for R squared, for S, uh, and for lots of other things. The lovely thing about having computers and calculators is that the computers and calculators will do most of that work for us, so we don't have to do it ourselves, okay? But the actual outputs can be a little bit confusing because there's a lot of information and data in them, so you have to know what to look at and what to ignore, okay? So all you really need to care about is the first column that you see right here. It's uh, usually labeled COEF, which stands for coefficient. Okay, The S down here in the bottom left corner, and R squared here in the middle. Okay, uh, Don't worry about these other ones, T, P. Um, we won't really need that for right now. Um, we might get to how to use these at the very, very end of the year, but this isn't something that comes up very often on the AP test, right? Um, you also don't need to look at this adjusted R squared value. We want to look at this one, okay? So really, these are the only four numbers you need to look at uh, when you're dealing with a mini tab output, okay? So at the bottom, the S and R squared are fairly self-explanatory, right? S is the standard deviation of the residuals, okay? And then R is, um, R squared written here, is R squared. It's the coefficient of determination, okay? These at the top are a, not as clear as to what they are just by looking at the mini tab, okay? But these coefficients, C-O-E-F, give you the slope and the y-intercept of a least squares regression line, okay? So this is the mini tab output for our price of the car and miles driven, okay? So what you'll see in the column here on the left, the leftmost column, it has two values, constant, and then it says miles driven. So the constant literally is the y-intercept value, Right, see it there, it's that number that you've seen a couple times now, 38,257. That's your y-intercept. And then whatever comes next is your x variable. Right, so miles driven was our x variable, right? And it's the coefficient, the box here in red, is the coefficient associated with the x variable. And in a in a least squares regression line, that value is the slope, okay? So you can take the information directly from the mini tab and write your least squares regression line, okay? Y hat equals 38,257, okay? Uh, and then that miles driven, it should have a negative sign in front of it, um, this is that's just a typo on this particular mini tab, right? It should have a negative sign on it because it's um, because it's an actual negative number, <laughs> right? Like the slope is negative, so normally it will have a negative number there. If it doesn't, make sure that you check the scatter plot to be sure that you're putting the right sign in front of the slope. So minus zero point one six two nine two x. 
right? So this is a very common question that gets asked. They'll give you a mini tab output and ask you to write the equation of the least squares regression line from the mini tab output, which is exactly what I did right here. Then another common thing that they will ask you is to predict a, a y hat value for a particular x value. So let's say the particular x value that I had was 200,000. Okay, and I asked you to predict what the y hat value would be. Right, so I have y hat equals 38,257 minus 0 0.16, whoops, hold on, 16292 times 200,000, right? And then I would do the math on that and get an actual predicted value. Now, another common thing that is asked with these mini tab outputs is how, how certain are you in this predicted value? Right? Is this a realistic predicted value? Now, to answer that question, you have to go back to the actual data, which I'm going back to right here. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit, actually a lot of it, on this side. So if you look, I only have data up to about 160,000. Right? So 200,000 is much further out, like probably somewhere over here on the x-axis, right? So my prediction for 200,000 as an x value is probably a little bit too far out for me to be really confident in the actual predicted value, okay? So what we did there is something called extrapolation, right? So you can extrapolate slightly outside of the range of the data that you're given, like of the x values that you're given, um, but you don't want to go too far out from that uh, because if you go too far out, the pattern that you had originally may not continue. Like You can't extrapolate much further from where you know, right? It's like, think about like your ability to see right? Like you can only see so far from where you're standing, right? Um, that if somebody asked you what you could see, like there was miles and miles and miles away, well, if you can't see it, you can't make a good guess as to what's there, right? Um, so just be aware of that because that's a very common thing that's asked um, when talking about um, making predictions, right? Uh, and, and extrapolating, right? So if you're asked how confident you are, you would want to say yes or no, and then typically your answer will, or your explanation will have something to do with extrapolating the data and going out a little bit too far from the, the data that you have available. The pattern may not hold, okay? All right, so you see you have this question here with another mini tab output. So I want you all to pause the video and try this one out, okay? Use the mini tab output to write your equation for the least squares regression line. And then these other three, interpret slope, interpret coefficient of determination, remember that's R squared, okay? And interpret correlation coefficient, that's R, right? Um, you have the knowledge already to do all of those, okay, uh, from previous videos. So pause the video here, try that question out, and then check back with me to see how you did. All right, y'all, so take a look at the answers that you see on the right-hand side of your screen. So I took my mini tab output, and I used that first column, the coefficient column right here, to write my equation of my least squares regression line. So there it is, y hat equals 14.816 plus 5.7066x. Because I used variables, I needed to make sure that I defined those variables in context. So x was GPA and y is starting hourly sourly. Okay. Number two said interpret slope in context. So this is where I'm going to use my script, or you may hear me call it a word formula. So the word formula is 
Y variable, so starting hourly salary, is predicted to increase or decrease. So this is increase because it's positive. Increase by $5.71 if you round. When X variable, GPA, increases by one and GPA is measured in points. Okay. Three said interpret the coefficient of determination. That's R squared, which they give you directly in the mini tab. Okay. So again, you're using your script. 97.7% of the variation in starting hourly salary can be explained by the variation in GPA. So pretty strong relationship there. Okay. And then the last part said to interpret the correlation coefficient. So they did not give us R, but they gave us R squared. So what you have to do is convert R squared from a percentage to a decimal and then take the square root in order to get R. So that's what I did. That's what you see on the screen. So I got R equals 0.988, which is a very, very strong relationship. So if you're interpreting the correlation coefficient, remember it's just the strength and direction part of describing a scatter plot. So all I said was there is a very strong positive relationship between GPA and salary. Okay. All right. So last part of this video is talking about, whoops, there we go, is figuring out slope and y-intercept if you are given the mean and the standard deviation. Okay. If you recall from a previous video, right? For, I think it was the first video in this section, that the least squares regression line always contains the point, these should have bars over them, x bar, y bar, right? Which is the mean of the x variable and the mean of the y variable, okay? One thing that we can use that information for is we can use that to calculate the slope and y-intercept of the least squares regression line using the mean and standard deviation if you aren't given a computer output, okay? So we calculate slope using the standard deviation of the two variables. So that's what this is, right? Both of these values here, the s's are the standard deviation of y and x, and then r is your correlation coefficient. Right, so that's where slope comes from, and then we use the, the means, once we calculate the slope, we use the means to calculate the y-intercept. Okay, I'm going to do an example for you here, but I want to tell you that this is very, very rare. Like, very rarely does this type of problem actually show up on the AP test, um, but every once in a while you'll see it in like a multiple choice type question. So I wanted to at least show you how to do these types of problems. Do not worry about having to memorize these formulas. They do give them to you on the AP uh, formula sheet, okay? So let's break this problem apart here. I'm actually going to go like this, move this over and zoom in a little bit so we can see this a little better. Okay, so here's our problem. In an econ course, the correlation between students' total scores prior to the final exam, so like their grade before the final exam, and their final exam scores is 0 0.6. Okay, so here's my correlation coefficient. I'm going to need that later. Pre-exam totals for all students have a mean of 280 and a standard deviation of 30. Okay, um, so here... Right, this is x bar, okay, and then the standard deviation of 30 is the standard deviation of x. Okay, you may be asking, how do I know that this is x and the other variable isn't x, right? Um, if you look later in the question, it says he decides to predict final exam score from the pre exam total. So, what you're predicting is the y variable, right? And what you're using to predict is the x variable, okay? Then I have my final exam score, so that's y has a mean of 75, so that's y bar, and a standard deviation of eight, so that is standard deviation of y, okay? So this says find the equation of the least squares regression line and use it to predict 
one student's final exam score. So her original exam score was 300 or her pre-exam score was 300. Okay. So I'm going to use my formulas up here. So B, which is the slope, is R 0 0.6 times the standard deviation of Y, which is 8, divided by the standard deviation of X, which is 30. Okay, so I'm going to take my handy dandy calculator and figure out exactly what that value is. Right, so I got 0 0.16. Right, so that's my slope. Okay, and then my y intercept, A, is the mean of y, which is 75, minus the slope, 0 0.16 times the mean of x, which is 280. So again, I'm going to plug that into my handy dandy calculator. And when I do, I get that this value is 30.2. Okay, so my least squares regression line, which remember your equation for a least squares regression line is y hat equals a plus bx. Right, so y hat equals a is 30.2 plus b 0.16x. Okay, so there's my equation of the least squares regression line, and then it's asking me to use it to predict this student's final exam score. So that's her, that's the x value, that's her pre exam total. So y hat equals 30.2 plus 0 0.16 times 300, okay? And then I just have to reduce that or simplify. So I have 0.16 times 300 is 48 plus 30.2 is 78.2. Okay, so that would be her final exam score, that student's final exam score. Now, there's one thing I want to caution you about. Because this correlation coefficient is kind of low, this least squares regression line may not be the best predictor, um, which is something that they may ask you about, like how confident are you in in this prediction. So I would say I'm like kind of confident, but there may be other factors that are uh, that contribute to the um, contribute to the final exam score other than the pre-exam total, right? Because that correlation coefficient is not it's not super super high. Um, I would say it's it's fairly moderate. It's like a moderate um, relationship. All right, y'all. So that is all I've got for you uh, for this video. There's one more quick one. Um, where I'm going to talk to you about how to plug some of these things into your calculator, as well as just a little, little bit about nonlinear regression. All right, so I'll see you in the next video. Bye, everybody.